Hey yo, another episode of the Tough Conversations Podcast. Podcast where I have the toughest conversations and necessary critique of the culture. My name is Fame and it's been a really weird week. The week just came back from a holiday break at the job. I had about five days off. And the first week back from a vacation always seemed super slow. Always seemed really slow. Never thought why. Because your body's so rested and coming back from vacation it just feels like uh so this whole week went by so slow. It's been a drag all week long and glad it's over man. But another reason why the week was so somber, um, heralded fashion designer Virgil Abloh uh, passed away this week on the 28th from cancer. Cancer he was secretly battling and told no one about. And that's just so fucking sad, man. And you know, if you don't know who Virgil is, um, he used to work at Donda with uh, Kanye West, creative Off White. Um, he used to be a DJ. Um, he was the uh, and he was the artistic director of menswear at Louis Vuitton. Uh, really deep into the industry and uh, like from what I seen online really good guy really he was seemed, he seemed like a nice guy and and it's just terrible we keep losing people man like they say death comes in threes and we got about a couple months left until no not even a couple months we got a couple weeks left to the year over and I I get in this eerie feeling we're gonna lose someone else of notoriety that we all give a fuck about before the year's over I don't know why I feel like that but I do and I know early on my IG I said um I said I wanted to talk about uh, Virgil and um, the battling cancer thing. Um, same as um, same as Chadwick was a year prior was secretly battling cancer, told nobody about it, and just you know win at that battle alone couple things on that from the people that's upset that he told nobody would it have mattered if he did I don't think so uh, maybe maybe people are nicer to him in the comments I remember was it earlier this year or last year? It was um the uh, the donation thing, and you know that the, the uh, he was doing a challenge challenge with his with a couple of his industry buddies like hey yo yo I donated this everybody let's donate da 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 and he um what is the con the contribution was fifty bucks. And they're like, yo, you nigga, you fucking rich as fuck, nigga. You donate 50? Nigga, fuck out of here, bro. What you doing? $50, that ain't shit, nigga. And then they started calling him 50, the new Virgil. So I'm going to keep it two Virgils with you. Keep it 100. I'm going to keep it two Virgils. Do they think that don't start if he tells people he has cancer? 
I still think it does. And finding out he had cancer don't make that less funny. I know in real life he was actually donating, so I'm not stabbing at him. But that doesn't stop two Virgils from being funny. That don't stop the internet from internet. So, only reason for him to, you know, hey man, I don't think y'all should be talking about me, man. I got cancer. Only, only reason to do something like that would be to get sympathy. Cause you didn't want fucking sympathy. He was getting killed for that, but he know what he was fucking doing. The people around him know what he was fucking doing. His wallet sure knows he was actually out here donating for real. He was just playing online with his couple of his industry buddies. But behind the scenes, he was actually donating fucking bread. Because that's a black man at the end of the day. And he know, he know what's the fuck going on. And he's locked in. Even though he with these fashion houses and, you know, he's with Louis Vuitton and Sometimes they, they seem like they don't fuck with us and shit like that, but he's off the Kanye tree, bro. Kanye don't play that shit with the people around him. So, that him having cancer don't, don't make two Virgils less funny. It's still funny. Good or not, two Virgils is still funny. So, I'm glad he didn't tell anybody. You people, people, and if people upset, oh, he should have told us. Uh, I'm so hurt he didn't tell us. Like, mind your fucking business. What can you do if he tells you? Do you have the cure for cancer, bitch? I want to, who have a tweet? Who tweet that was that went viral? Everybody was talking about it all. We had all the likes and reposts and comments who made the stir. I just feel like you should have told us. And then, yeah, yeah. Bitch, you got the cure for cancer, bitch? No, right? Don't forget, this is nigga mega fucking rich. Hundreds of millions up. And connected like a motherfucker. If that was a cure for the fuck he was going through. He would have found it without y'all. So. If you feel bad. For making the jokes before. That's on you. I don't. Two versions were still funny. Cancer or not. And I, I. I don't own any off-white. But. I always felt like it was cool as fuck. I always, I always thought it was hard. I always thought it was dope. But I don't own any off-white. So, even if I did own off-white, it doesn't change the fact that that shit was funny. Cancel or not, the internet's gonna joke. So, for the people that feel bad, that y'all was making jokes before, that's on y'all. If you if you if you feel bad making jokes, you shouldn't make them. That's how I feel on the whole Virgil shit. And um, and the hiding the cancer thing, man, it must um, same thing I, I I said about Chadwick with being your your circle being so tight knit for that not to leak to the press to the media. Or nothing, your circle has to be so tight knit and close. It's amazing. It's amazing at the, this digital day and age that people can still have stuff to themselves. We're in the age of people being in your business. And You know, just glad he can have some shit to himself. Uh, one more and one more thing about that um, that little somber over here. And this one hurt. This well didn't hurt. I think I'm a, honestly, I think I think I might be a psychopath. Hear me out. 
that usually didn't affect me a lot. Maybe it's because I never had somebody die. And I was super, 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 super close with them. So it's usually just, eh. Or, damn, that's fucked up, man. And I'm like, okay. That's it. My mom's, my mom's mom died. I was sad. But me and her wasn't the closest, so. It didn't affect me the way it affected my sister. Or my mom, or. You know? I'd be seeing people die. I'd be like, damn, like. Fuck, you know, you, you know, you go to funerals, because I've been to a few funerals. You know, my, uh, my, oh, my boy Snow, his brother died. And I'm sad as fuck, because I knew B for real, for real. Rest in peace to B. I, like, B was cool as fuck. But it didn't, it hasn't hit me the way, it, it, it's not going to hit me the same way it hit Snow, you know? That's his brother. I haven't had nobody that close to the circle die yet. And I'll be like, sometimes, and sometimes I don't even think I'll be sad enough. And that really fucks with me. Like, damn, like, yo, am I a fucking robot, yo? Like, I shouldn't be this okay. Even though I'm sad, I shouldn't be this okay. Like, like, I feel like I should be sadder. I feel like I'm supposed to be sadder when people die. And I don't. But that was before Kobe died. Kobe's death hit me different. I didn't know Kobe from a can of paint. And I felt Kobe. And I felt that shit. And I also felt um, Chadwick. No Chadwick from a can of paint. But I felt Chadwick though. Like my favorite, my little chain. You see my little chain? Like it's a panther. The reason I got this panther on my neck is because of Chadwick. Shout out Snow. He brought me my first chain. Yeah, he brought me my first chain. Uh, me, when me and T went to go, uh, not first chain, but he brought me this chain. We went to go shopping for jewelry. Just one early this year. Yeah, this year during the pandemic, you know, Snow had hit for some bread. And we're like, yo, yo, because, you know, I Snow I see as nigga. He always wearing jewelry and shit like that. He probably like, yo, I always wearing a chain. He was like, bro, go get your chain, bro. I bet. You know, I usually don't spend my money on shit like that. And I was like, fuck it. I want it. I want it. Uh, you know, when a person never does never does stuff for themselves and usually does, you know, stuff. I was never, I, I never thought, felt that I could be kind of selfish with my money, even though it's mine. I usually just spend my money on the right things, you know, food, clothes. Not clothes, I don't got our own shit, but food, rent, bills, shit like that, and save save the rest just in case something happened. I never, but when I seen, when we went to go get, get I seen the pendant, the, the panther pendant, it was right after Jadwick died, and I seen the panther pendant, and I was like, that's fucking dope. Like I said, I feel myself getting softer, and this is a good thing. And I'm, I'm about to have a little girl, so have to be softer. But I feel myself getting soft, softer. I was watching Lost in Space the other day. Uh, I was watching the finale of Lost in Space, and like a couple scenes made me tear up. Like, like. <laughs> I usually never cry shit. I don't usually don't cry. I'm not a crying ass nigga, bro. Like, I think I've said this before. I 
don't cry. I've been through bad breakups, hurt myself, not that, not probably that much, but I've been sick, shit, going through shit, been like sad and mad. I usually never cry, but family shit starting to make me cry. I seen this couple in Home Depot the other day. I'm shopping. It was just, and they just had a kid. And they had the little baby in the stroller. And that shit made me tear up. Like, aww. I think I need I need this. I think I need this. I'm glad that I can soften my tough skin, man. For now, have a little girl. Gotta be. Hey. Don't play, though. I'm kidding about my little girl. But. Glad that I'm softer. Getting softer for her. She's changing me. Not even here yet. Changing me. It's crazy. Um. To get off this somber shit. Did y'all see the video of Wake Osiris and Drake? Okay, Wake Osiris apparently owes everybody. Right, he owes baby 5k. He owes Boosie 1200. And now, nah, and he was at Drake's crib. Oh, Drake's a super nice guy. Everybody comes to his house. Whenever, when any of everybody's in Canada, they come to Drake's house. When everybody's in the six, they go to Drake's crib. So, you go to the, so he's at Drake's house, you know, being a tourist, walking around. Oh, shit. I guess they, uh, they play basketball because Drake has a full size basketball court in his crib. And he, you know, do, 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 do. And then I guess Drake won the majority of the games. They bet 60K. And he went, saw a video. Oh. <laughs> it's the funniest shit on the internet right now. It's, <laughs> it's Drake was like, yo, you owe me 60 bands. This ain't Lil Baby or, or Boosie. You owe them. Uh, 1200 or whatever what, how much, You owe me 60k To pay off your debt right now I need you to sing And if you don't know who Wacky Osiris is The kid that had that uh, one song No disrespect to the kid Call him a one hit wonder or anything But he's known for one song A song worth it I'm a kid you know what Baby girl You just gotta be yeah. worth it So I, I owe you no more Drake was I like yo you, you want to pay off his debt? You got to sing for me live. Right now in the crib. What are we talking about? You got to sing for me live right about? here I'm in my fucking living room. I'm not baby. I'm and not he playing this. <laughs> and then he was like, and then you know. You owe me 60 bags? You know, you get that embarrassing loud like, boy, you crazy. You owe me no money right now. I swear I need a I'm not playing. The real shit, though. Who sing? He started playing songs. He started performing the songs, bro. <laughs> then you start singing it, Drake just busts out laughing. Like, that shit was funny as fuck. That is the funniest shit on the internet right now. It's so funny. Uh, shout out to YK, man. Shout out to Drake. Y'all y'all stupid. Y'all stupid as hell. Um, fuck, y'all. Uh, I just want to talk to y'all about this podcast shit. This podcast shit is hard, man. It's not easy. What I do here, not easy at all. It's like, I never meant for this to be a solo podcast, right? I started this with someone who I would, would, would consider a friend because when I, when, I, uh, when I was living in Orlando for about two years, I started a podcast. It was called um, Broke Black But Famous. It was supposed to be a solo podcast, just me talking shit. It was just a little hobby I was starting because I was in Orlando by myself. And after the first episode, I put out one episode and I recorded the second. The second for the audio was terrible. So I deleted that shit off the server. So, I never put the second episode out. And I stopped doing it. 
but I always wanted to start be a podcaster. And I don't I don't mean for like monetary reasons either. I, this is kind of like therapy to me. I like talking. I like having conversations. I like talking shit. I like, you know, doing my thing. I like doing that shit. It's kind of like therapy. It's like, it's good for me. So, I started, I started, so, when I met with, uh, when I met with, uh, with Chris, you know, we became tired at work. You know, we used to talk all the time at the job and shit. If you listen to the first episode, he's tell you how we started the podcast. Uh, go back to episode one. It's doing amazing. A lot of downloads, a lot of views, a lot of listens. But, it was, yo, let's, yo, you know, we should do start a podcast. I was like, yeah, because we was having podcasts at work. We'd just be talking on and on and on and on and on and on and on at the job. You're like, yo, you know what we should do? We should start a podcast. You know, for me, like two months, it was like, yo, we're going to start a fucking podcast, bro. We're going to be talking about this. We're going to talk about that. We're going to da 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 And then we actually started it. Uh, April 3rd was the first day we recorded with the episode. Was the first episode. And started the pod. It was cool. I was like, I really liked it. And they're like, yo. It was fun. But this was never. But when I started it, it started it with a partner. I never wanted to do this on my own. And. I'm doing it on my own now. It's, the numbers are still are still good, and I still like doing it. It's still therapeutic for me, but I wasn't supposed to do this shit alone. I started it with a partner, and it's fucked up that me and him not even fucking cool. No fucking more. And I don't know why. I, like I said, I never wanted to do this podcast shit by myself. If I wanted to do it by myself, I would have kept doing it when I was in Orlando. I would have been three years in. But I got a tendency to start shit and not finish it. So that's why I kept going after me and him kind of like lost our friendship. He bowed out of the pod. I don't know. We, he don't even fucking talk to him anymore. So it is what it is. But like I, I didn't like I said I didn't want to do this on my I want I didn't want to do this by myself. Originally, when I want to do a podcast, I was like, "Yo, I need a co-host. I need a partner." I just like I don't know where that where where that is that friendship that um it's it. I can just say it. It's, it's non-existent. We're not friends anymore. And I have to see this nigga every fucking day. At the work. And we're not friends. We don't speak. We're well, right past each other. I work for them. It's crazy. He's my supervisor. And if it isn't about, hey, do this or do that, we don't speak at all. And... I'm quiet anyway, so I don't be, but for the sake of the podcast, not for the sake of the podcast, because we was cool before the podcast, but for the sake of being men, shit shouldn't have to be like that. We shouldn't be acting like girls, real catty, don't speak to each other, like, but that's, but that's where we are now, and It is what it is. He has nothing to say to me. I got nothing to say to him. That's just the way the fucking cookie crumples, I guess. It is what it is. Oh, well. Yep. What's up, there? Um, anything else happened this week? Seen the uh, OKC okay, so got they got beat off by 
the Grizzlies, 73 points, that's, that's definitely fucking respectful. Um, LeBron beat COVID in two days. Had a positive test two days later, negative, eight negative tests. So he's cleared to play tonight. So my goat beat COVID in two days. Ha ha ha. Virgil died at 41. Sorry to bring y'all right back to that, but. 40 fucking one, yo. I'm 20. I'm 29. That's 12 years. Imagine me dying when my daughter's 12, 11. Imagine that shit. That shit. I can't. Fathom that shit. I can't fathom me dying when my daughter's 11. I can't fathom me dying at all. But I don't know what's gonna happen one day. I just pray and hope it's a long way from here. I hope I get a million more days on this fucking planet. But that isn't always how the cookie crumbles. Rather somber note. Put my glasses back on. Anything else? Like I said, anything else happened this week before I get out of here? Uh, there was a shoot in Michigan. Another school shooting. Just open your Twitter. Shit just, makes, <laughs> shit just makes you laugh. Breaking news. Man shoots friend over LeBron Jordan debate. <laughs> That's not funny. But it's funny. Like, nigga, it's not that funny. <laughs> and I'm looking... And I'm, in a, I'm looking at the comments of the story. It said he was definitely a Jordan fan. Bro told him Jordan playing against Plumbers and he shot him. <laughs> Yo, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's not supposed to be funny, but it's funny. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. Just hilarious. Um. Hmm. Oh yeah, one more thing. Tori Lance. Torlane's got an 80s album, 80s themed album coming out on the 10th next week. And the two songs he dropped so far, 87 Stingray and Lady in the Mech, I think Namek? Namek. It looks like Namek from Dragon Ball Z. It might be Namek. Those songs are fucking fire, dog. If Tori wasn't canceled, that 80s album would be every fucking well. Because that shit is... For lames. I've been listening to that Lady and Namek song for the last four days. Great. It is fucking phenomenal. Baby! Like, that's... Oh, Tori is just so fucking talented, man. And... And... Um... Bes, besides, she... 
uh, besides the making the salary thing, man, if he, if he wasn't going through that, he would thought he's so immensely talented. And going through this mech shit really fucking up his career, man. It's fucking up his trajectory. It's fucking up his career. I just, honestly, I just want that, that whatever, whatever happens with that, I want that to be over so we can know what happened and what's for real with this case so we can know how to go accordingly. It's cold-blooded killers. I still listen to their music. So I'm not going to listen, not listen to, um, Tory Lanez if, if he shot me, it'd be fucked up. But I know how to separate the artist from the music. In most instances, the music ain't the music ain't shoot Meg the Stallion. So allegedly, again. But he's so talented, man, and I just feel like he's he should be man. I don't even want to talk about this shit. But shout out to Tori. Shout out to Meg too, fuck. Shout out to everybody involved in that fucked up situation, cause none of that shit ain't have to happen. But that's why I'm gonna leave y'all. Whew. Tough conversations podcast. Podcast with added toughest conversations. A necessary critique on the culture. My name's Fame and I don't have a co-host anymore. No co-host. Lost a friend. Fucked up over Virgil dying. And Kobe. Chadwick. XXX. Mac Miller. Nipsey. It was just to entertain us. Not even the people I personally know who's dying and who's dead. <sighs> That's the breaks. Sad episode. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, when somebody dies, it's just. That's just how it be.